All right. So today we are joined by Anthony and Megan Tesser of Tesser Traditions. Thank you for joining us, guys. Um, yes. So we've got a lot of things that we wanted to talk about, but uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourselves? All right. You want to go first? Or you want me to? Well, yeah, sure. I, uh, well, we got married when back in 20, 20, oh, 2008. And yeah. Good I thing you got own. that right. Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah, I stumbled <laughs> that for a second. I got mine engraved in my ring, so if I ever forget, I've got to close yeah. <laughs> Well, I lost my ring. So oh, yes. my goodness. Yes, I know. I know, yeah. I have to go get a new Sensitive one. topic, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and since then, um, you know, I was running my own business, and uh, Megan was working at a daycare at the time, and uh, eventually got to the point where she wanted to run a home daycare and um, make some extra money and whatnot. And I started traveling for a living and she wanted to make some extra money on the side while I was gone. So that's when I, I guess. stopped doing daycare. Yeah. And yeah. We started traveling and we had our second. I was like, okay, I can't do the daycare with him being gone for so many months out of the calendar year. So um, I, we moved at that time. Actually, you guys were the um, buying agents. That was one house. of my notes that yeah. I wanted to talk about. <laughs> so. Lane. So when we moved, um, some of our furniture stayed with the house and some of our furniture we just sold after. So when we moved, our house was pretty bare. And I thought, I'm going to just make or refab whatever I can. And then um, from there, it kind of turned into people being like, can you do that for me? So then, Anthony, I sucked him into repainting some stuff with me and helping me move things around. Um, and then, sorry, Anthony, I cut you off. Um no, then, okay. like one of the times that He's he was gone, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> one of the times that he was gone, uh, the I couldn't move the furniture obviously because I had like it was just me and I had the two small kids. So um, my son had this IKEA wooden slatted box spring, and I took it at like out from under the mattress. I brought it out to the garage. I called my father in law, no no over, and I was like, I want you to cut this up for me. I'm gonna start making some signs and some whatever. So he was like okay, you know, if that's what you want to do, are you sure you want to cut up this box for I'm like, yeah, it's only like 19 bucks. It's fine. Like, let's do it. So he cut it up for me. I uh, played around with Anthony's uh, le- drill screwdriver, electric screwdriver thing yeah. out in the garage there. And then I started selling signs. So then when Anthony came home that year, it was like, okay, you're going to help me do furniture. And we're going to do signs and we're going to do all these fun things. And then it just kind of took off from there. Yeah, it, it, it kind of worked out well because, as I said, I started traveling for a living and I would travel. I'm really curious to hear about that. You want to? Yeah, you do. It's it's nothing really crazy. Or anything. I do hail damage repair for a living. So anywhere in North America that there's a storm and it damages, you know, thousands of cars or whatever the town or city it may be, I have to go right out there, you know, the next morning and set up shop for six months. So wow. I'm, I'm away all that time. And then when I get home, um, it's like, okay, well, what do I do with my time? And she's, she's like, well, you have a background in, in building furniture, right? Cause my no, no, uh, did it with my father. And then my father did it with me when I was a kid. So I kind of knew that already. And, uh, we kind of just started building things from there. Mm-hmm. And, and it also came from like, Anthony is like the conservative one. And when it comes to spending, like he doesn't like to spend and I like to change things around pretty often, which I'm sure you guys know. So probably appropriately sat at the table then because (laughs) I'm the frugal one in this relationship. (laughs) (laughs) And I like to change things around quite often. So um, I wanted like a new harvest table because the table that we had was very like traditional. I love that table, by the way. Thank you. That's Um, awesome. So yeah, we had like this like brick kind of, dark looking table. And then I was like, you know what? I want a different table. So then that was like table one. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, we ended up selling that one. It was just too plain for me. And so I was like, I want something more like this. So I like talk with my hands and draw out these like terrible sketches. And then Anthony's like, he makes something beautiful out of it. So, um, that's how the furniture thing started. And then, uh, the coffee table was like one of the pottery barn inspiration tables, but I was like not spending like two grand on a coffee table that my daughter's you know, probably Mm going to color on anyway. So I showed Anthony some examples of what I had in mind, but I wanted to, you know, change this, that, and that. And he's like, okay, well, you know, I'll just, I'll buy a lathe and I'll make the legs myself. And I'm like, you know, you should probably, like, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Like, you know, 
turners take years and years to get this skill. Like, don't worry about it. Like, maybe let's just do something simple and work up to that. Well, of course, like, he's in the basement for, like, an hour and a half, and he comes up, and he has, like, the perfect, <laughs> like, leg for the coffee table. And so then it just, it's, now it's just, like, whatever I want. He just. <laughs> it's therapy for me, so. Yeah. I tend to have fun doing it. And Time away from the wife and kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, like, like she said, she comes Good up excuse. with the ideas. Yeah. She's more or less the visionary, and I'm the, the implementer, I guess you can say. Yeah. But uh, so that's why we have a good dynamic when it sure. comes to these kind of things. Yeah. And it's, I, it's like, it's almost annoying. Cause he, like, I will try so hard to do something for like hours and hours and hours and I, and I can't do it. And he'll come out for like two seconds and be like, Oh, just, you know, turn the board this way or just do the, like just strip it this way or whatever. And it's like, he does it perfectly like first shot. So, um, so yeah. I wish I was that handy. Yeah. I know. Me too. <laughs> So you guys uh, started your own uh, store, your yeah. Shopify store, yeah. uh, not that long ago, right? Like no. a couple months ago? Yeah, it was a couple of months ago. So like our primary source of business was Facebook for the last five years. And that has been like amazing for us. But um, I wanted to switch it to a platform that could kind of be more self-sufficient just because Facebook is t- so time consuming where um, customers are asking kind of the same questions like sizes and whatnot over and over again. So I thought, you know, if we had this platform where everything's laid out, it makes shopping easier. Some of our items are shippable. Um, it would take some of the time that I spend away from personalizing each answer. Um, so it has been, it has been good. Mm-hmm. Um there are more products and stuff like that that we need to get on the website, but for a start, I think we did pretty good. So yeah, it looks nice and clean. You guys have some good arrangement of uh, yeah products. I saw your new uh, little tic tac toe board uh, that you posted. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, selling out of some items too. Yeah, so. we've sold out of quite a few things. Um, we worked with um, a graphic designer, Yvonne, on the layout of the website. Um, so I can't take credit for the. Um, function oh, yeah. of it yeah. and like yeah, how looks gorgeous nice. it is. Looks yeah, sharp. she did a great job. Um, but uh, with Anthony's travel season kind of starting soon, that kind of plays a role in what products we have available and stuff like that. So um, I did bring in some wholesale stuff this this time, but uh, it's hard when you've put so much work into a business and a brand and you want it to reflect a certain way. And then you when you're bringing wholesale things in that maybe aren't the quality that you're used to producing or it's not fitting with um, like, I want everything to always just be authentic. So it's hard to find things yeah. that really fit with our brand. So um, it is, it will evolve. It's just taking us a little bit of time. So everything in business yeah. is always That's evolving. I keep telling myself. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Patience always is so important. Oh my goodness. Mm. Yeah. Keep telling yourself that Mr. Trump. I've, I'm, <laughs> I was uh, bad with that. I was never very patient at all, but I've learned to be. Yeah. That's good. And uh, it's amazing though, because you look back, it's like time flies so quickly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now that we've experienced that, it's like, okay, so five years down the road, isn't really that far. So no. just take it one day at a time. And yeah. before you know it, you'll look back and mm-hmm. you know t- have taken an enormous leap. So mm-hmm. Did that, you know that we actually represented the buyers for their home on Duncan? How no, that ago, was news How long ago me. was that? That it was, was like, like six, six years, years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. 2013. Yeah. November. Yeah. There. Yeah. I remember because our agent, like, I mean, we were, that was the second property that we'd sold. So we were pretty good sellers anyways about making sure that like the house was like in good condition when the new people were moving in. But our agent, uh, Fred was like, you know, these guys are really great. I really want to make sure that the buyers are happy with the home and that, um, you leave it in like impeccable condition. So Anthony was away actually Mm. when we moved. So he was in Alberta. I was with a three-year-old and a newborn, Mm -hmm. Um, and like moved by myself and, but oh I was like goodness. cleaning the oven until like midnight the day before we closed. Cause I was like, <laughs> gotta make sure that the house is spotless. So, um, and I yeah. think they fell in love with your dining table at that yeah. time. Yeah. It was funny. Cause, uh, our agent was like, you know, I've never had so many people want to buy furniture before. And, um, the table, the original table that was in there, Anthony and his dad made. So I was like, no, it's not for sale, but we did leave like the stools and like some other. Yes. That, I think that was in the contract, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. 
and and they are still there to this yeah, day. Yeah, they are, are. We're still good they friends have a little with boy the neighbors. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. Susanna and uh, yeah, John. I was just trying to figure out which. Oh, was that's yeah. that's nice to hear that they're still. And yeah, I was a lot happy. more colorful back then, so like all the rooms were different colors, and I think that um, the neighbor that was there said that she kept the little boy's room like from what I had when we lived there. So it's, it's quite the compliment. Yeah. yeah. It's a big change. Cause now everything's like white and off white and <laughs> variations of white. <laughs> I actually quite liked that house and the, the layout of it. Yeah. And, uh, uh, obviously a good location. They're very happy there. And, mm-hmm. uh, I wish that Heathwood would come back to Milton just because yeah. they're, they build they tremendous. Build, homes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our first one was anatomy and it was phase one of the escarpment. So it was, um, I, I mean, like well, with all phase ones, there was some issues, but uh, Heathwood was exceptional and the community itself, like our sister-in-law lives over there still. And the community itself is just so well kept and yeah. it's a beautiful community. Where do you guys live now? We live over in new, new, newest Milton, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, Saveline and Louis St. Laurent. Yeah. yeah um, close to Tom, uh, Tremaine. Though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit, I don't know. We like, we miss the old area we were living yeah. in. We miss that last house. We miss the neighbors. And, you mm. know, it's, it's a bit of a different world where we are. It's, I don't know, it feels, it's not that far, but it feels so much more fast paced and yeah. not as many it's people are interested in, you know, yeah. talking to you and they just, yeah. you know, don't even say hi. Whatnot, it's busier. But. And I don't think that, um, I think that most of the families are working families, so they don't have the time to really care too much about their yards and stuff like that. Whereas Heathwood, I think it was a lot of like, Stay-at-home moms and mm-hmm. and families. Maybe and, higher uh, uh, income yeah. brackets. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Well, a higher well. price point for those homes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have uh, quite often I'll work with clients who specifically want a Heathwood home. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So they'll wait until something pops up in that little yeah. pocket. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they have a good name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, they use good quality materials and mm-hmm. you look yeah. at little attention to details. Like when you open the closet, there's the light that turns on inside the yeah, closet. Yeah, all that makes such a things. difference. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Little things like mm-hmm. that. And their fixtures too, like their standard fixtures are also more modern. Like uh, the home that we're in right now um, is a conservatory group and the lighting in the home is like, my parents have like a townhouse that they bought in like the eighties and it's like the same light. And I'm like, why is this? (laughs) The $5 uh, um, bulb lights or whatever. Yeah. 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 How many of those have I changed so far? My goodness. Well, the light bulbs, but the actual light fixture itself, like that dish is just, yeah. Pretty dated. Why did you guys move (laughs) into a bigger home, double car garage or? No, um, we moved into the same size home. We just, um, at the time, it seemed like a good idea to move because Anthony was traveling so much. We had made money off that house and it just seemed like with him gone and like my daycare was like a steady income. And then um, for a few months when Kendall was baby, I didn't really do anything. It wasn't until I was like, OK, I can't just do I can't just do the kid thing. I have to like have a creative outlet. Um, so financially, it made the most sense to sell. When we yeah. Did. And and the prices were decent at the time. And but we thought, oh my gosh, we should, you know, cash out. Yeah. It's going to go down. Move your bit. equity around. Yeah. And of yeah. course it didn't. It just kept yeah. going. Right. So. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, yeah, we liked that neighborhood mm-hmm. a lot, yeah. but uh, probably if we didn't move, Chester Traditions would never have happened. So, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was reading through your blog. You have a lot of interesting blogs about, uh, helping people like keep organized mm-hmm. and need things to do around the house. Yeah. I thought that was a cool connection because, you know, on our end, we help people buy and sell houses yep. and you kind of tackle the in-between of helping them make it a home. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty incredible. Like the simple little tips that you've got that can really take a house from being chaotic and mm-hmm. cluttered to, yep. you know, much more. Have you enjoyable. been reading Megan's blogs? <laughs> I have. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, so for everybody listening, sorry to interrupt, uh, make sure you follow these guys so uh, you can follow Megan Tesser and uh, also their Instagram page is uh, Tesser Traditions yep. and there is a link in the bio for their uh, store as well where they have lots of good stuff that you can buy. Sorry. That's okay. Um, I think like one of the most important things, like, so when we bought our first house, we were really young. We were, uh, 23 when we moved in, we didn't have a lot of money, but I was really focused on making the house a place that I love to be. And I think that 
you can get really caught up with all the things that you want to have and not necessarily appreciate the things that you do have. But once you appreciate what you have and you, you know, find cheaper alternatives that maybe look the same, but you had a hand in like fixing up. So that's kind of the thing that I love to encourage people to do. Like I look around the house and every room has something that Anthony and I have either made together or painted together. And like whenever we're picking up furniture, there's always a fun story attached to that. So I have those memories of like making my kids drive four hours out west so that we can go and pick up a <laughs> like 200 pound hutch that I actually can't even lift and an old 70 year old just had truck. like yeah. back <laughs> surgery has to help Anthony carry down the driveway so there's a national lampoon story in there somewhere, <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah yeah well everything's got a story to it yeah. so that's why it's nice and yeah the house. yeah yeah, we go into houses all the time where it's just like, I can't believe p- people live like this. Like, like cluttered? Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. And then, like, it's such a big difference coming home to a house you thoroughly enjoy yeah. being in. Mm-hmm. Such a great feeling. Yeah. And then you see uh, Megan's post of how her table was set up for Easter, and you're like, who actually lives like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? It, it, when you have like less junky things, it's easier to like, that's something like, I mean, I notice my house will start getting junky and then I'm like, okay, time to like donate, sell and, you know, get rid of because declutter. Yeah. Mm. The more stuff you have, and like, I think it's a process that should happen every season because the more stuff you have, the less you use it and the easier it is to, you know, make a mess. Um, my kids like the fancy table settings so that they're, they're pretty good at helping me. Like they like to help me set the table and they like when it's pretty cause they know people are coming for dinner mm. and, <laughs> and stuff like that. So it does, it does. Stay you have that two way. kids, right? Yeah. Two, How old are they? Uh, nine and almost six. So, wow. Well, time does fly. Cause I, know, I remember I when you sold yeah. the Duncan house, yeah. uh, yeah. I think you only had one and yeah, I had, we had the two, but the one was just a baby. So, yeah. um, yeah, it does. It just flies by. And yeah. I think that like going back to what you said, where you're like, you have all these goals for business and you're so busy and you just kind of want to get to that finish line instead of enjoying the in-between. When you have kids, that's really when you're like, OK, time flies and yeah. like you have to, you know, make those memories before it's gone. So, yeah. Well, without them or something like that, that kind of puts things into perspective because you yeah. realize how quickly they're growing. So you realize mm, how quick yeah. time is going. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. When you're a new mom and it's the middle of the night and everyone's like, oh, it goes by so fast. You're like, no, no, it doesn't. But then when you look back, you're like, yeah, it does. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I remember one, my first daughter, she was still an infant and I was obviously up for nights at a time. And I remember one time I was changing her diaper in the middle of the night and was like, why did we do this? (laughs) (laughs) But then, and then you see them like smile at you eventually. And it's like, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. We have the times where we're, well, where we were sitting, you know, in front of the crib and our daughter sleeping and, you know, like, should we have another one? And then then she's up screaming and we're like, no way. No, I think we're done. You guys realize your kids are going to be watching this on YouTube in 10 years. (laughs) (laughs) I knew you didn't want me. (laughs) They were not mistakes. They were planned. My twin boys are <laughs> angels. Okay. You have twin boys. Twin oh, wow. boys. Oh, yeah. Wow. They're turning two this month. Oh, oh my goodness. gosh. Wow. Yeah. That is, that That's is busyness. busy. Two yeah. is busy. Twins Our Easter busy. table did not look oh. anything like yours. No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's busy. And, uh, you know, Natalie does a good job of holding down the fort. Yeah. Uh, obviously we're busy with work too, but, yeah. uh, it's, yeah, it's a lot of work and, mm-hmm. uh, we have a lot of decluttering to do. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, when you have small kids, it's easy to accumulate stuff. Oh, yeah. And like everybody, like I've started being like, don't give the kids gifts on for occasions. Like give them like. Give the parents money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> not money, but like uh, gift cards to like the Cineplex or, you know, my older guy loves to read. So I don't mind like the book gifts and stuff like that. But my daughter gets like everyone gives her these like little LOL things or if like she, she, we have a hard time getting her to go to school. So there's some bribery that happens there and her automatic, like, Oh, I, I want to, you know, get a little LOL or whatever, but then it's like, she opens it and then it's like, it just sits there. And then, yeah. you know, I could, I could throw it out. She wouldn't even know. <laughs> yeah. I'm very much the same. Like every time something comes in, it's like, something okay, well, out. something's going out. Yeah. And I know some parents who, spoil our kids and buy them lots of stuff yeah and most of it just every time you go over it's just sitting there yeah it doesn't get used no it doesn't yeah, get no, played it with gathers up in the trash you know, yeah it's, it's a waste 
Yeah. yeah. And for any of those people who have bought us those LOLs, we still love you. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think half the enjoyment of those is unwrapping them and opening oh, them. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, there are those videos of that too. Yeah. yeah. On the YouTube, you know? and yeah. Kids love to watch yeah. other kids opening. I think it's just the yeah. excitement of opening. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Except the kids yeah. opening them on YouTube are getting paid millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. 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 I also noticed. How like, did he get three million views and we got <laughs> <Yeah>. 60? <laughs> <laughs> it's the kids. It's the kids yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. They're like, reply, oh, yeah. reply. That's the key, Cam. We got to start interviewing uh, some children. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that, I think that like having function and organization for kids is important too. Cause like my daughter will always gravitate towards the clean cupboard. Like, so we have an art cupboard and it's all organized and everything has its right bin. And whenever she's just like, you know, having free play or whatever, there's a basket where I kind of put all the toys that need to go away. So I'll shove them all in the basket until it's full and I need, and I put it where it goes. Mm -hmm. Um, she always gravitates to the clean organized spot. Like once I've gone in her room and reorganized her Barbie clothes and the accessories, she'll go play with that. But if it's all like over her floor or a mess, she won't even look at it. Mm -hmm. So I think that kids enjoy organized spaces as well. Yeah. Well, we have a ritual kind of routine at home where almost every night um, the kids will, well, not so much my two-year-old, but yeah. um, Tessa, my four and a half year old, she'll uh, go clean up all her toys. Mm -hmm. And she's to the point now where she's very particular. Like if I am helping her and mm -hmm. I put things in the wrong spot, yeah. no, no, daddy, I have to like, redo it. Okay. So You're yeah. very lucky. <laughs> yeah. It's like having, I think implementing habits like that is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Kendall doesn't, she likes when I clean up her stuff. She doesn't necessarily like to clean it up herself. Yeah. Um, actually, the other day she's like, my friends and I sit on the couch in kindergarten and watch the other friends clean up. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you can't do that. Like, you need to clean up after yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, made a couple of notes before yeah. you guys came in. And one of the things that, uh, well, there's two things that caught my eye over the last several weeks since... Um, we knew you guys were coming in. Yeah. Uh, you were posting at some point uh, vegan recipes mm -hmm. that you were you were making. Are you guys vegan or are you just how nope. do you, why the vegan recipes? And I'm interested because um, one of our kids is um, ha he has a, a milk allergy. Yeah. Um, and we found out because um, when when he was young, he was getting uh, rashes yeah. and things like that. And as soon as we took the dairy away, it all went away. Mm -hmm had problems with eczema and yep. all that and, and all went away. So we decided, okay, no dairy for, for both of the kids. Yep. And I've had to adapt because I do primarily all of the cooking mm -hmm. uh, at home. Um, so I had to adapt my cooking style because as you know, um, a lot of butter and cream mm -hmm. and cheese mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all the stuff that actually tastes good. Yeah. Uh, so I had to adapt to now start making vegan recipes. I mean, we still eat grilled chicken with that recipe, but yeah. you know, something taking like that. Yeah, yeah. Just taking out the dairy. So, um, um, we aren't vegan. Um, I think that I have, like, I have a hard time balancing this and what I say with like social media stuff. Cause I do have a high regard and respect for farmers and the, like certain, uh, farmers in the dairy industry and stuff like that. So I don't like to um, throw too much shade on that, um, issue. But I do think that there are a lot of healthier alternatives to, um, dairy and meat products and meat byproducts. Uh, like we, our kids don't drink milk. Um, Kendall drank goat's milk when she was old enough to drink milk. And then, uh, now we just drink almond milk. Usually actually I make mm -hmm. my own, um, I just try to find things that have like the highest nutritional value. Um, and that's kind of how we lead our diet. Anthony is the one who usually will start with, with the, the trend, like not the trends, but like, he's usually the one who's like, okay, like, listen, like I don't want to eat as much meat. So then it was like, we didn't eat any meat at all for two years. And then just recently we started eating. It's because he's eating chicken. burgers when he's away on <laughs> yeah. vacation. Yeah, that's the way it was. Right? Actually, and I felt horrible when I get yeah, home. Yeah. So I'm like, Megan, we need to change it. Actually, the guys that he usually travels with like they'll send me like these funny messages because like we have these jokes about anthony at the restaurants because he's so picky when he's out like and mm -hmm. especially when he's working and stuff and one of the guys he travels with often alex um does a lot of the cooking when they're away like when they are eating at the the home that they're in or whatever and so he'll he'll send me these funny like little messages back and forth about anthony like anthony 
he will eat scrambled eggs, but you know, those little white things in the egg, Mm -hmm. like you have to take those out or Anthony won't eat them. Right. So Alex jokes around, he sends me a message. He's like, I don't, I don't take the white things out. I just (laughs) tell him that I do. So it's always, (laughs) (laughs) so it's always Anthony's, uh, introduction to these dietary changes, but I'm, I feel like I've just been on a constant pursuit to be healthier, you know, yeah. to be like the healthiest person I can be. And I want my kids to be healthy as well. Mm-hmm. And it's so tough. Cause she's, she usually cooks. She does the cooking, right, Megan. And, um, she tries to accommodate me and it's tough when you're cooking two different meals, you know, the kids and then your mm-hmm. meal. And then possibly if she doesn't like it, another meal for herself. Mm-hmm. So she's tried to kind of, uh, mesh everything together in a way that the kids will like it as well. And and I wasn't eating meat there for a while too, but I realized, you know, it's a good source of protein. I need it. And, um, I think, you know, we all yeah. need it and kids too, especially growing up. And so, yeah, yeah I've just, I've, I don't know, I've just wanted to eat better, I guess, and feel better. I think everything in moderation, unless you have an allergy restriction is, is always good. I think that there's a lot of dairy substitutes out there now that where I feel like if you don't, if there is an alternative, then, then you can use the alternative sometimes. Um, and I think mm-hmm. like I I found some great things that taste just as good as and it's what we fun grew up too. with. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, fun for you because you're not yeah. doing the cooking. Yeah, exactly. Hey, it's entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I just bought a, um, a cold pressed juicer, the yeah. uh, a good um, omega juicer, and it has the option to make your own almond milk. Mm-hmm. And we're all almond milk all the time. Yeah. Um, how do you make yours? I, so I do the, um, I soak the almonds overnight and then I use my Vitamix. I just add two dates to it and I add a a little sweetness. Yeah. Just for a little bit. Um, and then I add a teaspoon of, uh, like the pure almond extract and I just blend it. And then I have these milk bags that I got from the kind matter company. And then I just put it in and I just, I wear gloves. Um, and then I just squeeze all the milk out and then it, Anthony usually goes. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I am, we've always bought our stuff at the store up mm-hmm. until she started making it. Yeah. And, um, the taste difference is so much better. I didn't yeah. think it was going to taste. Do you, have you made yours yet or no? It's, it's so much better. I yeah. just don't yeah. like all the additives. Like, cause obviously it's traveling, right? So there's preservatives yep. that need to be in it. Yep. And it's also more expensive to buy it from the store than it is to make it yourself. Like I, I, I think that's something that, you know, prevents a lot of people from making the healthier options cause they always cost more like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. There's a component of the convenience factor, mm-hmm. right? Like, um, I think a lot of people fear and that's, I've, I'm big into juicing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used to buy juices from random places and mm-hmm. some stores here in town, like, um, booster juice, the green eatery, they, they all offer, uh, mm-hmm. juices. And yeah. I had one this morning from booster juice cause I had no time to Take make it. my own. Mm-hmm. Um, but So there is that convenience factor, but let me tell you, when I juice at home, everybody feels energized. Mm -hmm. uh, Everybody feels less hungry. Mm -hmm. Um, So I find that with a lot of things, if you do spend that little extra time, um, you're probably saving money. You know Mm -hmm. exactly what's going into it. So, so I've been following some of the stuff that you were, um, you were posting. Mm -hmm. um, And I thought that was kind of interesting. The other thing that um, caught my attention and we're both big red wine drinkers yep. is your, uh, um, your new label that, uh, you were, <laughs> you were showing off there. <laughs> that was just, uh, um, that was just a fun, um, I like personalizing things. Should start selling wine in your yeah. store. Now, right? I know. Actually, we were laughing about that the other day because we, we, we joined Anthony's sister, Christina, she was bottling wine and, uh, we were watching her do and we were learning about the whole process and everything. And we we're thinking it would be fun to own a winery and have our own, you know, wine and, or even just my own labels would be fun too. <laughs> so, I so I don't know what you're talking about. So you're making wine. So I, the new Vinbon location on main street okay. or not main street steel. 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 Um, yeah. It's like a micro wine brew, like winery. Yeah. So um, I, I, Anthony's sister was there for the grand opening and then my brother-in-law was like, oh, we bought like all this uh, wine and it's like fresh juice and whatever. So I started to do some research about it. Um, And then I um, set up a meeting with Vitaly, the owner. And so him and I are actually in a partnership right now with the blog and promoting um, the business in town. Uh, And so 
Christina was bottling her wine and she actually made a really funny label. Her dad hates wine. So the <laughs> title of her label is Mario hates wine. And I was like, Oh, that's a fun label. But like, I'd like one that's just a little bit more like me. So I was like, can you put traditions on that? And I want this label and whatever. And he's like, yeah, sure. And then I was like, wow, this looks so good. How does the wine taste? It's good. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm not a, a big, you didn't red bring wine. us any. Thank you. I know I should have <laughs> next time. <laughs> you need, I've never, I don't, I don't think I've ever had a bottle of not homemade wine. I guess it's not yeah. homemade, but bottle your yourself kind of stuff that I've really enjoyed. Enjoyed, yeah. Yeah, so it is. It's hard. To try. Like I've heard it's that because he drinks sixty five dollar <laughs> bottles of wine. No, I don't. I, I always find the good cheap ones. <laughs> Um, he uh, he does like a wine tasting every once in a while, so you can usually taste what you're like before you're actually making it. And yeah. then he also said that uh, it's never happened to him before, but before you bottle your wine, you're allowed to taste it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to, you don't have to bottle it. He'll start mm. something new for you. So um, as far as the, yeah. the taste, like personal, I, I like the red wine there. I'm not too much of a red wine drinker. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when Christina made hers, I had a glass and I actually really liked it. We have a bottle at home right yeah. now that we're drinking. Well, I'm drinking. I think the biggest appeal to it is that it's a certified vegan. And I think most wines are vegan now because that's just kind of the way things are going. Like why have animal byproduct if you don't actually need to have it? Um, so I think that's one of the big appeals to it is mm-hmm. that it's a certified um, vegan. But uh, but the whole experience is fun. It's a really it's a really great place and it's fun to hang out there. And, and when you say you have a bottle of wine at home, you're drinking, how does that, you mean it doesn't, it, it makes I it just, past one night? I just got yes. into it. Okay. Oh. It does. I'm the only one drinking. It does. I don't, I don't, he opened it this morning and is going to okay. finish it tonight. Megan's okay. a white wine drinker. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I can't drink more than a glass of wine. And then like Kendall's yeah. like bright eyed and bushy tail the second she gets up and like, you have to be on your game with Kendall. You can't, you mm. can't be in a cloud from the night before. So. But if your body starts accepting the fact that it's going to receive <laughs> yeah. two or three glasses a night, it adapts very well. Yeah. Well, when Kendall's out of the uh, waking me up constantly stage, then I'll. <laughs> so for those listening that have ambitions to maybe not purchase your stuff, but actually do their own DIY stuff. Yeah like to get back to your grassroots of where you started kind mm-hmm. of thing. Do you have any tips? Cause like I would like to be handier yeah. mm-hmm. and make things around the house. I think, uh, hmm. you might want to pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why I think of that and why I'm, <laughs> I can be handy if needed. Okay. okay. I've got all the tools. I've Let seen you try you. to install those Sonos cameras that we have. Like that just requires one screw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that uh, there have been a couple of instances where uh, that didn't go. Or so sorry, well, not Sonos. I said Sonos cameras. The Arlo, Arlo camera. cameras. Arlo yeah, camera. I knew what you were talking about. Yeah. Um, so we have a cottage that we're uh, renovating, and nice. um, we just did the uh, the kitchen last year. That was phase one. Phase two is going to be uh, living room, and um, we also did the Muskoka room. So lots of clean slate and. Yeah. You know, I I find a lot of the DIY stuff that I like mm-hmm. fits real well in a cottage, cottage yeah. right? Sure. Uh, so if you had um, some recommendations and suggestions on things that maybe I or somebody that's listening that is like me that maybe has difficulties with some things, um, any any uh, anything think- that you would recommend or. I think that a lot of people have a hard time seeing past the ugly. So like you're at a garage sale and you see like a dresser or a table or whatever that's, um, you know, not worth purchasing. Um, I think that you just under, you just have to, you know, if you find something, then you're drawn to it. You just need to give it a chance. Just try it out because painting furniture and like stripping furniture down to restain it is not that hard. It is time consuming and like you need to have a place to do it. But it's it's a lot of fun and it's really rewarding to have your own personal touch on pieces that are in your home. And it is it's so much more cost effective. Like um, I have like a big the big white cabinet in the dining room, like when customers pick stuff up, they are always asking me about that cabinet. And I got it for like 250 bucks Mm. off of Kijiji and I just painted it. And I mean, most people would think that it's like worth a couple thousand. So um, that's a good way to. Oh yeah. You go to, I have seen that uh, Hutch and uh, you go to restoration hardware for Mm -hmm. something like Mm -hmm. that. And you're talking four or five grand. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. 
Um, and there is tons of tutorials online and like Pinterest that you can, I, I mean, I think that you have to start small so that you feel like, okay, I did this. I can move on to something bigger and give yourself that gratification. If you're taking on like something, like if you're trying to build a big harvest table and you don't know how to use a saw, then you're probably being a little bit too ambitious. You should start smaller and kind of like work your way up. Cause when you feel like when you've done something, then you're motivated. I was not. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and you have nothing to lose, especially with those small things. Exactly. Yeah. Try to tackle them one at a time. And I think it's important to keep things out of the landfill too. I mean, Mm -hmm. they don't make furniture like they used to, unless Anthony's making it for you. Um, Like he takes like every caution and step to make sure that the furniture is built to last. But like, Production brands aren't doing that. So um, if you find a dresser that's like 20, 30 years old, you know, buy it, fix it, make it work because those other dressers aren't going to last as long. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad because when we bought our cottage uh, two years ago ish, mm-hmm. uh, we got it as is. Mm-hmm. So everything that was in the cottage was now ours. Mm-hmm. And the owners um, previous to the people we bought it from, had basically built that property uh, from scratch back in the 60s yeah. wow. and had furniture in there from the 30s and 40s. Yeah. And so we inherited all of this. Mm-hmm. And so much of it was like ugly, yeah, like mm-hmm. yeah. really ugly to look at. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, people say, Cottages are the place where all your furniture goes to die. Uh, and that's what happened with that place over the last 50 years. And uh, so we got a, rid of a lot of it because it just didn't fit. Right. And uh, But, you know, to, to the points that we just made, we got rid of a lot of it because we didn't want to tackle the job. job right. And now in retrospect, I'm like, oh, that dresser, that table would have looked so great. We did keep a couple of key items that you can tell they're just built real well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the original owner lives next door uh, or his son lives next door. So we got some insight and the dining table, um, which has like these big bear claw feet or the uh, legs Mm -hmm. and uh, just gorgeous. He said it's probably 120 years old. Um, So that might be a project that I'll tackle to, uh, um, bring back to life yeah, and, yeah. and keep that modern. but uh, it's hard to replicate that kind of thing right mm-hmm. oh if they sure. all have their certain charm when it comes to that age and uh, mm-hmm. design and whatnot if you just give it a you know coat of paint or strip it and restain it it could look totally different and yeah. really feel warm in your home so i don't know how you guys find or source any products that you're um refinishing if it sounds like you're doing a lot more of building from scratch now yeah. too, but, um, there are a lot of auctions. I don't know if mm-hmm. uh, you guys uh, attend any, but, uh, you know, we've got Hume's auctions here, yeah. um, up on a squeezing, uh, sometimes there's auctions here at, um, um, fairgrounds, the fairgrounds, the Milton fairgrounds. And, um, a lot of them are estate sales yeah. and, uh, you can find tons of mm-hmm. dressers and tables and things for like 20 to 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. take them home and start with those projects. That's the best place it. to start. Yeah. It's cheap to get into it. And then you can just, it's yeah. learn as you go. And like Megan said, there's so many tutorials out there and, yeah. and whatnot to help you along the way. And I've always been pretty like, um, from day one, I've always been really helpful when people message the page and ask me, like I've, I've pretty much helped people transform like their whole dining room set or, um, like bigger hutches, things like that. I I'm always happy to help out where I can with tips and like what you should or shouldn't do and what brand I would recommend. Cause I recommend different brands depending on the project. Um, another great place to find old pieces is Facebook marketplace. That's always the cheapest way that I've found, um, secondhand mm. pieces. So people just want to get rid of it and yeah. post something for yeah. 10 bucks. Or sometimes it's even like, uh, I have, uh, it's funny cause I have a bunch of people all over town in different areas who I've never asked them to, but they will see something on the side of the road and they'll call me. They'll be like, hmm. tell Anthony to get in the truck and come over to, you know, whatever mm-hmm. road and pick this dresser up. And so on bulk that. day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just drive around town. Yeah. 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 A lot of people do that and find, yeah. sometimes you find a good gem. Yeah. yeah right? I think that it's like, 
a generation thing too. I think that like the generation now is inheriting their parents' stuff or their parents have passed away or grandparents have passed away and they're like, oh no, like this is just ugly. It's going out. We're throwing it out. They don't even want to take the time to like put it somewhere proper or donate it to Habitat or whatever. They just throw it to the curb, Um, which is such a shame because, you know, so many good pieces we've rescued from the garbage. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we live in a time where if something's broken, people don't want to fix it. They just replace it. Yeah. So yeah. people like you can benefit from that. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I understand a lot of people don't even have time to. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's the big up. thing is just everyone's so busy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Just not mm. feasible for most. Mm. Yeah. So I think before we get wrapped up, I saw yeah. um, you recently posted uh, something about Mother's Day. Yep. Yeah. And I know the three of us could probably, I know I could benefit from some tips from you, but with Mother's Day around the corner. You actually remembered this year, so that's I know. Uh, thanks to Megan <laughs> and her blog. What, uh, for us and the other um, husbands and kids of mums, what can, what does mum want? Honestly, what I said in the first Are you listening? line of my blog. <laughs> I'm going to take it all. <laughs> <laughs> what I said in the first line is like, moms want to sleep in. They want you to get up with the kids. Yeah. They want you to like make them breakfast, maybe do the dishes so that like mom can come down in the morning to a clean kitchen. Um, I that That's what I, Anthony's actually really good to me on Mother's Day. So that's what I like. I know that like I can make a mess of the kitchen and he's going to clean it up uh, and stuff like that. <laughs> Not just Mother's um, Day. <laughs> but I also think that there's a lot of really thoughtful gifts. Like Milton has like this huge maker community mm-hmm. and there's so many personalized gifts and I've purchased so many um, like gifts that are really meaningful and flowers are always really nice. The flower market, the Milton flower market um, at the town hall is the day before mother's day so cool that's a good place thank you (laughs) no problem glad i'll watch this back and uh (laughs) make some notes let your wife sleep in (laughs) yes yeah (laughs) don't book any appointments on no don't show any houses (laughs) no open houses (laughs) i'm good i think i'm okay all right well uh we chatted quite a bit this morning Yeah. yeah Thanks for, uh, Thanks for coming into us. the yeah, KT studio much. today. And uh, hopefully we can uh, continue this relationship, maybe collaborate on some projects in the future. Yeah, I would love that. All right, that's a wrap. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to this episode. Make sure you check us out on Instagram and follow us wherever you may be listening.